Hello, everybody. There are more than 11,000 stroke cases only in Switzerland. Every year, the hundreds of spinal cord injured patients after accidents and trauma and, and, and diseases also in Switzerland, and there are more than 2,000 amputations leading the patients to, to wear prosthesis like I'm wearing right now. They are quite well developed. It's possible to walk with them quite fast. There are different versions of them for running, sprinting, walking. Very good, well, very good developed. However, for some tasks, they are almost not usable. For example, climbing stairs or climbing a, such a ladder like this one. For this ladder, it's for me possible to do a step with a healthy, intact foot, yes. But to do the other way around with my prosthetic leg, it's quite challenging because I cannot put potential energy into this device because there's no motor. And most of the systems used today do not use motors. So what I have to do is either I have to use a lot of momentum to swing me up, which causes a very asymmetrical, unhealthy gait, or I have to, use, have, to have handrails to push me up. So prosthesis nowadays are still not well developed. I can put it off now because I still have my leg. Thanks. So let's switch to upper extremity prosthetics. That's a prosthesis which can be controlled by my muscle activity. There are some electrodes. I could put them onto my arm and then control this hand and open and close it. However, they're also not well developed. They're quite novel, great robotic prosthesis available, which are able to take, for example, a coin. Maybe you see this coin here. However, if you see a person with one amputation in the arm, asking him to pick up this coin, how would he do it? He would just take the other arm, which is not affected, and take it. So there's no need for some of the advanced functions which are available. However, to do some more important, bilateral, be manual tasks, the procedures are not made. For example, like carrying a tray, where you have to balance objects. It's difficult to do with the procedures, even with our body procedures. Or open a little bottle of jam or this bottle. It's very difficult. Peel a mandarin with two hands. Almost impossible. Or cut a bread, where you don't want to press it too, too strong. It's also very difficult. It's, there may be manual tasks which are difficult to solve with current prosthetic devices. Another technology which is available nowadays is functional electrical stimulation. That's a muscle stimulator using currents to stimulate my muscle. I've connected it to some electrodes which I've attached to my leg, which I'll show you. So these are some electrodes. And this kind of technology is used for spinal cord injured patients, even with complete lesions, where you can get some muscle function back by stimulating the muscle artificially. So I have to switch it on and go up to some value. Then I'm sorry to show you my back. You will see then how my muscle, my shank muscle, is contracting, and my foot is then doing a plantar flexion movement. So if I switch on now, maybe you see, I can get stronger. So my muscle is contracting, and my foot is pointing downwards. The maximum is reached. Again, now, ouch, Mimi. And I can use this to drive a bike, for example, a passive bike, or to walk. But this technology is not well developed, forces are too little, and fatigue is generated much too fast. So the technology is still not mature. Okay. So now we wondered what can we do to push the development of such kind of assistive technologies to make them more usable, more meaningful, more acceptable for the patients, for daily life activities. The idea we had is to organize a competition similar to the Paralympics, which will take place in two years. And please, I invite you to see the trailer of this competition called the Cybathlon.
Thanks, but I will continue. It's not the end yet. The goal of the Cyberlon is to promote the development of useful technology for people with disabilities. And we will organize this in a large stadium, and by organizing it and performing it, we want to remove barriers between the developers, the researchers, companies, research labs, the people with disabilities, and the general public, which still have too many taboos nowadays about disabilities. There are six disciplines which we'll organize. One discipline which be, will, be with, uh, will deal with knee prosthesis, as, the one, I've, as uh, the one I've shown. There will be a race course where we have obstacles relevant for daily life, like walking up and down slopes, walking up and down stairs, being able to sit down a chair and stand up again, walking on uneven terrain, such as gravels and cobblestone, and other tasks. I was inspired by an event which took place two years ago in Chicago, where a patient with an actuated knee prosthesis was walking up, walking up the Willis Tower, the former Sears Tower, in a short time, which was caused, causing a lot of media interest. And that showed that it's possible to walk stairs quite efficiently and fast with an actuated knee prosthesis. There are many different devices. People can use also passive devices without motors, but they will probably perform worse on stairs and ramps as those using actuated motors. So there are devices which are only passive, based on low friction, multicentric joints. There are also active processes, as I've uh, mentioned before, where a motor is used to generate some energy, some potential energy, and allow walking upstairs and ramps. And there are some mechatronic devices, which are using electronics to change the stiffness, to change the damping or the viscous pro properties of the joint, in order to improve the gait function and the gait pattern. But they are not actuated. There's no energy being produced. We now, in our lab, develop a special actuated knee prosthesis, which is using a combination of motors and springs to get the best performance for walking upstairs and ramps. And we also work on special human-machine interface technologies to allow a very easy and intuitive control of these devices. The second discipline is about powered exoskeletons, where, for example, patients with complete spinal cord injury can wear, like a trouser maybe, and use it to support, to get support during gait. There was also a very interesting event two years ago at the Summer Olympics in London. Claire Lomas was starting the marathon with this special device, exoskeletal device. She was not so fast. It took her 16 days. They had to change the battery very often. So it quite a bulky device, but it showed it's in principle possible to walk, even for people with complete spinal cord injury. There was another event, not so visible, but uh, interesting, of a spinal cord injured soccer player wearing also such kind of exoskeletal device and a brain-computer interface during a kickoff shooting of a soccer ball one day before the start of the World Cup in Brazil. Another discipline which we will organize is a powered wheelchair race with similar obstacles like the one you've seen in the prosthetics race. There are quite well-developed devices already available, like this device uh, called iBot. It's based on the same technology as the Segway, which you might know. It can balance on two wheels only, and you can climb, class quite, uh, can climb, uh, climb stairs with the device quite easily and go over uneven terrain and so on but the devices are still very bulky, heavy, expensive, battery power lasts not so long. There's still a need to improve this technology. Then we will also use this, this functional electrical stimulation technology, where patients with complete spinal cord injuries are using, allowing them to drive a con quite conventional bike without any motors. The power here comes from the muscles, from the own muscles, using electrical stimulation. And the challenge will be here to develop special control patterns which allow a high force but on little fatigue during a race course which will be at the edge of the stadium on such a track where at least two pilots will compete against each other. The bikes are already available, you can buy them for people with disabilities, with spinal cord injuries and other diseases. The stimulators are existing but they still need to improve them. Another race will be based on the use of upper extremity prosthetic devices, as the one I've, that I've shown. 
where we will do some games, for example, this wire game, where you have to go along the special wire. You must not touch the wire, otherwise it will be a, a buzzer sound. And there will be also other tasks, daily living tasks. We will have a breakfast table where the patients have to prepare breakfast in a short time and compete against each other. There are well, quite well advanced technologies in single cases, patients wearing this multi-electrode electrode interface allowing to record the intention of this patient and control quite advanced processes with many fingers, many motors. This guy can do many different grips and, and uh, reaching movements and grasping movements by using this kind of special device. But they still need to improve the dexterity of the device, the performance and the quality of the movement of such devices. And another discipline will be, used to be based on brain-computer interfaces for patients with very high lesions, like ISL or very high spinal cord injuries. It's possible to record brain activities and interpret the thoughts or some commands that patients want to do. And that technology can be used later to drive any kind of assistive device or a computer. We will develop, with, we will develop a special animation, a special game, where the pilots can then drive virtual cars or avatars on a screen by using their thoughts. The technology is also available, but still not functioning well enough for daily life use. The event will take place in a large indoor stadium, the Kolping Arena in Kloten, with a space for about 8,000 people. We did develop the race courses and rules and safety aspects quite a while ago, for example, at an ETH summer school, where 20 students from all over the world came to develop special race courses. They used, used some uh, Lego first, but then also some wood to make a uh, stadium and uh, make models of the different obstacles and discuss different aspects of the races and plan the races finally based on rules and safety criteria. It's organized by ETH Zurich and presented by a large robotic research project, a Swiss robotics project. We have support from the most important Swiss patient organizations who are giving mainly organization support and distributing information. We get, got already quite a lot of this visibility. I had the honor to give an interview at CNN. There were articles at BBC and many other media, radio stations all over the world did already broadcast about the Cybathlon. There were many different newspaper articles, not only in Switzerland, but in many countries all over the world. There was just two weeks ago uh, broadcasting at Japanese National News Channel presenting the Cybathlon in the trailer I've shown to you. And the latest achievements are that Japan is interested to hold the Cybathlon four years after our Cybathlon because in Tokyo there will be the Summer Olympics in 2020. They want to combine it with the Cybathlon. The Korean Ministry of Health supports the Cybathlon. There's also first sponsors now ready to pay and support the Cybathlon. We gave presentations at many fairs and conferences to get the pilots and the teams to participate at the races. There are many pre-registration already now, but 60 teams are interested and have started to develop technology and novel technology. We will show some basic technologies at the Swiss Handicap end of the month in Lucerne and many TV documentaries are planned all over the world. So please come, mark your agenda, October 8, 2016, it's still two years' time, in the Kolping Arena, and I want to finish with a short final trailer. I am good at sports, but in my daily life, I have some limitations.
six disciplines, more than 30 countries, more than 100 pilots, over 7,000 people in the stadium, and 1 million watching on TV. Cybathlon, Zurich, 2016. See you there. Thank you.